Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video of my Getting to Know WebCore series, we will be taking a look at some of the more advanced features of WebCore, such as local variables, for each loops, and while loops. In this spooky Halloween themed piston special, we will be bringing back a once had ability of the Google Home. Google removed the ability for Google Assistant to control smart lights and switches back in 2017 when triggering the Let's Get Spooky action. I don't think there was an official reason given, but it's believed that it was a fire risk because Google had no real way of knowing what was plugged into a smart switch, and smart switches could be turned on that had things like heaters, crock pots, or curling irons plugged into them that could cause a fire risk if left on unattended. The Let's Get Spooky action was actually a pretty cool feature of Google Assistant and is still there, but instead of controlling your lights, it can only play scary sounds. This piston will be set up to control three types of lights, which are RGB, dimmer, and switched lights. You can add additional things to this piston, but for this example, I'm going to stick to those. If you plan on adding other devices, make sure you are turning on and off devices that can be left on for an extended period of time without issue. To get started, create a new blank piston. I'm going to call my piston Let's Get Spooked. Inside the piston, you will want to make sure you have two settings turned on. The first being show variables. We will be creating a few local variables in this piston to easily keep things together and allow for quickly adding or removing devices to the device groups. The second setting is going to be show advanced statements. This will allow us to access advanced statements you may not be used to seeing. Once our settings are correct, we can go ahead and start working on our piston. The first thing is to make the local variable groups. For this piston, there will be three separate device groups. The first will be for switched lights that will be spookified. This would include any light or light switch that can simply turn on or off, and doesn't have any RGB or dimming capabilities. To create a variable, click on Add a New Variable under Define. In the pop-up window, change the variable type from Dynamic to Device. Afterwards, name the variable. While creating the variable, we will go ahead and populate the devices we want assigned. To do this, select the drop-down menu under Initial Value and select Physical Devices. Next, open the gray drop-down menu next to Physical Devices and select all the devices you want to have added. Once done selecting everything, click on Save. The next group to be created will be for dimmer lights. This variable will be created the same way as the switch lights variable. It will be for any lights or light switches that can be dimmed but do not have RGB capabilities. We'll also want to make sure we populate it with our devices. The last variable will be for RGB devices. This variable will be created the same way as the first two and populated with smart light bulbs that have the ability to change color. After all three variables are created, the next step is to create the initial if statement. This is done by clicking on the add a new statement option under execute. If this is your first time working on a piston with the advanced settings enabled, you will notice a bunch of new options to pick from here. We'll be touching on a few of them later, but for now we are just going to use the if block and select add a condition on the new window. This is where the virtual switch being turned on by Google Home will trigger the piston to run. For this condition, we will select our virtual switch, select the switch attribute, and select the trigger changes to on. After this is all set up, we can click on add. Next is to add a while loop. To add it, click on add a new statement under the then section and then select add a while loop. This loop will be used to continue the light changing cycle while the virtual switch is on. Once it's turned off, the loop will be broken and the piston will finish executing. After creating the while loop, we will add the condition of the virtual switch being on. Next will be to add the many actions of this piston under the do section. These actions will include turning switch lights on or off, randomly dimming lights that can dim, and changing the color of RGB bulbs. This will be accomplished by having a separate for each loop for each device type. We'll create our first for each loop to change RGB bulb color. A for each loop allows for the ability to go through a grouping of devices and have the same actions applied to every device within that group. To do this, click on add a for each loop, and on the new window that opens up, Search for the variable we already created for RGB lights under the list of devices and click on add a new statement. From here, click on add an action. In the new window, search for dollar sign device and select device. Pay close attention here as you do not want to select devices. Click on add a task and on the drop down on the next window, search for set color. Once selected, change the drop down under color from preset to expression. 
and type in random parentheses along with all the color options you would like the bulbs to be able to change to. Make sure that all the color names are in quotes and separated with commas. After your color list is completed, don't forget to close out the expression and then click on add. So far, this for each loop will randomly pick a color from the list and assign it to the light that it is currently being executed on one at a time. Next is to add a wait action within the for each loop. This will allow for a gap in between any RGB lights in the variable group. To do this, click on add a new statement between end with and end for each and select add an action in the new window. In the next window, leave location selected and click on add a task. From here, search for wait randomly in the dropdown. In the new section that opens up, enter in the minimum and maximum time you would want this piston to wait before continuing on. For this piston, I had all wait periods randomly wait between 0 and 3 seconds. This seems like a good amount of time to space out the actions as well as make it random enough to get a little spooky. Once your time is entered, click on add. And with that, our first for each loop is completed. Next is to add a wait period between the for each loops. To do this, click on add a new statement between end for each and end while. Click on add an action on the window that opens up, leave location alone, click on add a task, and select the action for waiting randomly with whatever maximum and minimum you would like for your piston. After clicking on add, we can move on to our next for each loop, which will go right under the wait action we just created. This for each loop will be to toggle switched lights. Select add a for each loop. In the new window, select the switched lights variable, click on add a statement, and in the new window, click on add an action. From here, search for dollar sign device and make sure to select device and not devices. Next, click on add a task. On the drop down menu on the new window, search for toggle and then click on add. Next will be to add our wait timer within the for each loop so that there is a space between every device within the switched lights group being interacted with. This is created exactly the same way as the first two wait periods, and I will be using a random wait between 0 and 3 seconds. And that's it for our switched lights. Now while the piston is executing, lights in the switched lights variable group will be toggled with a random period of time between each. Next is to add a wait period between this for each loop and the last for each loop we are going to create. This wait period will go between the bottom, end for each, and end while. This wait period will also be between 0 and 3 seconds and created the same way as the others. After that, click on add a new statement under the wait period just created. In the new window, select add a for each loop and select dimmed lights for this for each loop. After clicking on add statement, click on add an action on the new window that opens up and search for dollar sign device, making sure to select device not devices. Click on add a task. Here we will first select the action of set level and have it set to zero. This will allow for the dimming effect to be more noticeable and adds a bit more spookiness to the piston. After that, we will add a wait timer right under the set level action, and this will be for between 0 and 3 seconds. Next, we will add the actual dimming action right under the wait timer we just created. For this, search for set level and change value to expression. In the expression, we will put random, parentheses, 100%, end parentheses and click on add. Lastly, for this for each loop, we will add in a wait period right under our action, so that way there is a time gap between any devices within this group. Again, I will be doing 0 to 3 seconds, but you can adjust it as you desire. And with all of that, our piston is all set up. Let's go ahead and save it at the top right hand corner and take a look at how we expect it to function. With the way the piston is set up, when the virtual switch Let's Get Spooky turns on, the piston will trigger. The piston will then cycle through the following actions until the virtual switch is turned off. Change any configured RGB bulbs to one of four colors, then toggle any configured switch light or light switch, and finally set any configured dimmable light or light switch to zero and then set it to a random brightness level. These actions will then repeat until the virtual switch is turned off. 
We could just stop here and just simply turn the switch on and off to trigger the piston, but I wanted to add a bit more automation to this. So for the next piece of the spooky puzzle, we will be having Google Assistant trigger the piston as well as interact with anyone around. To do this, we are going to create two custom Google routines. First, go into the Google Home app and click on Routines. From here, click on Manage Routines. On the new window that opens up, click on Add a Routine. Next, add the command word that will trigger this routine. For me, I'm going to use Let's Get Spooked. After that, we will add two actions for the assistant to execute, first being to turn on the virtual switch in SmartThings. To do this, click on Add an Action. Click on Browse Popular Actions at the top, select Adjust Lights, Plugs, and More, and click on the cog next to it. From here, find your virtual switch and change the drop down next to it to be set to turn on. Once done, click OK at the top, then scroll to the bottom of the page that you are now on until you see the Custom Response section. You'll want to select Say Something and then click on the cog next to it. This is where you can have Google respond to you. For me, I'll be putting something cheeky. Click on OK, and then click on Add once on the previous screen. Finally, I'm going to have Google play some music. Click on the cog to configure the setting. I already have a Google Music playlist set up, so I'll put the name of it here, and click on OK. Once the routine is configured, click on Save at the top. Next, we'll add a routine to turn everything off. Click on Add a routine at the top. For this command, I'm going to have it set to I'm scared. For assistant actions, we will first add a command to stop playing music. Next, select Adjust Lights, Plugs, and More again. Pick your virtual switch and this time have it turn off. Click on OK and then scroll to the bottom of the page for custom responses. Select Say Something and then click on the cog next to it. Here enter whatever you want Google Assistant to say. Click on OK and then click on Add at the top of the previous screen. After the routine looks good to you, click on Save at the top of the page. And with that, we now have our two Google Assistant routines set up to control our spooky piston. I think it's finally time to test everything out. Let's get spooked. Okay, but you asked for it. Great, so our routine works as expected to play music, trigger our piston, and respond to us. While this plays for a little while, I'd like to go over a few things for the setup. Depending on how many devices you add, you may see delays between devices changing. You are welcome to change the delays between actions as you please or even remove them. You could have the piston just turn everything off when the piston is done, but for me I decided not to. I did spend a good amount of time getting this piston to behave the way I wanted it to, and I do plan on expanding on this piston for next Halloween. So if you have any suggestions on how to make this piston better, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And while you're at it, if you want to be notified of additional videos I release in this web core series, along with other great tech videos, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Now that the piston has been running for a little while, let's go ahead and test out our second Google routine. I'm scared. Boo ha 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 happy Halloween. Awesome! The music stops, Google responds, and the piston is turned off. And with that, we have a piston that mimics what Google Assistant used to do when it originally released its Let's Get Spooky action. Happy Halloween, and thank you for watching.